Welcome back. When it comes to the stock market, we have been pretty lucky for a pretty long time, but you know what they say about all good things. The question is whether the market's recent roller coaster ride, which includes today, due to the normal ebb and flow, or is it because of the president's threats about tariffs, his war on Amazon, or at the exploding budget deficit? And joining us for more is Kristen Zaborski, an economics professor at State College of Florida, Jeff Stern, an ABC 7 business insider, and Frank Alcock, a political science professor at New College. So the Dow uh, closed the day down 424 points, points, and you said, hey, quite a re rebound. That is correct. It was down about 550 points. I went into a uh, meeting with some clients, and we were down only about 200 and came out, and all of a sudden it was 550. So it came back a little bit. I, I'm sure you, all you guys just like look up at the screen or look at the screen and just like, you know, swallow a little bit. It, exactly. We heard it before, but we do keep a long-term approach to it. Let me ask you about uh, something that USA Today wrote. I think we have it on the screen here. The era of calm markets and small price swings is over. The new normal on Wall Street is all about wild fluctuations, mammoth moves like the Dow Jones Industrial Average's 1,000-point drop earlier this year, and rapid-fire price reversals that can shift the mood of the market from optimism to pessimism in a matter of minutes and sometimes seconds. True, Jeff? I would say not necessarily true. The number is big, but percentage-wise, this is not that abnormal. This is in the upper 25% or so for volatility. Last year was abnormal, but right now we're on the upper side, but it's not crazy yet. Just the numbers are big. And, and Kristen, in the big picture of the U.S. economy here, what's happening the last few weeks, is significant or not significant? I would say it's uh, insignificant. Um, after speaking with the president and CEO of the Atlanta Federal Reserve Bank, um, he's confident inflation is um, at the target rate. It is expected to build over time. Uh, unemployment still remains incredibly low, less than 5%, and then economic growth is expected to increase between 2.3 and 2.5%. I have heard some people say that there are expected uh, interest rates increase, increases coming in sometime this year and that could also adversely affect uh, the market? Um, it could be three times that the Federal Open Market Committee decides to increase the federal funds rate or a total of four times um, uh, until the end of 2018. And that just means that as far as our mortgage rates, as far as um, interest rates on uh, car loans, it is going to rise. Unfortunately, consumers can't always um, decide when they want to um, buy a home or buy a car. Frank, it, it seems to me that the market was, uh, you know, when uh, President Obama was still in office and into the Trump presidency th for the first nine months, uh, it, there was nothing but the escalator was just going up. And then the president started talking about tariffs. He started picking on Amazon. And you also had uh, concerns about the budget deficit after the huge tax cut. Is it fair enough to say that these are some of the things that, that the political decisions have caused some of the market instability? Well, I'll defer to uh, Kristen and, and Jeff. I, I think so, but my sense is that w the market will react uh, to a, a, few, a few different things. They're probably looking at the long, medium and long-term implications to the bottom line of a number of firms from whatever Trump is saying on a given day. Um, that can be very volatile, and he can be changing his mind. So I think there's some discounting that goes on. The other part of it, though, is sometimes you get reactions to reactions. And so a lot of you know, very short-term volatility that's reflecting how investors think other investors are going to react to what the president just said. All right. We are just getting warmed up, and we'll have much more on the roller coaster stock market right after we check the first alert weather. So stay with us. Welcome back. We're talking about the roller coaster stock market. And then joining us for more are Kristen Zaborski, an economics professor at State College of Florida, Jeff Stern, an ABC7 business insider, and Frank Alcock, a political science professor at New College. Frank, let me start with you. If you could talk about the tactics or the strategy that the president is using here when talking about or going after Amazon and its CEO, Jeff Bezos, the uh, talk about tariffs on China and the tax cuts, are these strategic moves um, or is it playing to his political base or both? 
Uh, or neither. Uh, I, I, I do think there's some playing to the political base uh, with respect to a long-term game plan or strategy. I'm just personally at a place where I'm not seeing that. I think it's a very impulsive uh, a president that just it says things, just reacts to things uh, emotionally. Some of it, again, it, he knows what plays with his base. And so those and themes are... And that is important, though. Uh, um, uh, certainly, his base can't accuse him um, of being a turncoat or not sincerely believing in a lot of things uh, that he says. Whether these things are, are, are wise economic moves um, and whether there'll be a penalty or a cost is, is another question. I, as I, th I said before, I think that a lot of people discount some of the rhetoric um, but if, in fact, uh, he does blow up the NAFTA talks, if he follows through on some of these uh, 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 tariff threats with the Chinese, um, if, if the European Union, our relationship with our allies over there, begins to unravel, then there might be some serious consequences. You know, in the past, we've, there have been so many stories about everything a president says has impact, especially when it comes to the market. Not anymore. Well, that's the question here. I mean, uh, whether it was the president or when Alan Greenspan was head of the Federal Reserve, people picked apart the words uh, and, and it moved markets here. And it is doing the same under President Trump. But um, the, the question is whether there are people who are inside the White House or on Capitol Hill to say, listen, you know, for the good of the economy, you, want to be, you might want to be careful about these things. I think he's, th those people have said those things and they're gone now. Okay, uh, <laughs> Jeff. Why don't Very we take true. why don't we take a look at some of the numbers uh, today? As you said, you were you went into a meeting. Right. Uh, a, a, the market was doing what when you went into the it meeting? Was about two hundred or so down, one hundred and fifty, if I recall. And what do your clients ask you when they call you on on a daily basis? And they've seen in the last couple of weeks that much more volatility in the market. The beauty is we really don't have those frantic calls on a regular basis. There's a couple of clients and you know who they're going to call and they're going to worry on a day-to-day -day basis, but you invest for the long term. And if your time horizon is 10, 20 years, you have to ask yourself, will a company like Amazon be higher in 10 years? And sure, he tweets and all of a sudden it drops 50, 100 points, whatever the case is. But I think that's a short term. But I would imagine a lot of your clients are not at this stage in their lives, you know, especially with the number of retirees around here, they're, they're, they may not be around in, in 10, 15 years, and they're more concerned about the next 10, 15 weeks or, you know, months. Mm -hmm. Well, again, let's take consideration 2017, right? So all of a sudden you're up 20, 25 percent, and now you're roughly flat for the year, maybe a little bit negative after today we saw those down markets. But I mean, put it at all, you're, so you're averaging 10, 12% over the last two years. That's doable. That's even a longer term effect than today or this past week or the beginning of this year even. I don't know if you recall 2016, the market was down, had its worst open, down around 12%, and it was a positive year. So long term is the key, but in the short term, yes, I believe tweets and the president and any kind of news can affect the markets and does. Kristen, there's been a lot of discussion what impact will the budget deficits that are we, we're going to have now because of the tax cuts that were passed late last year are going to have on the economy going into the future here. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the GOP's basic bottom line is that you know, the, the GDP, the gross national product, will grow and cover what would be an increase in the deficit. But in terms of the economic community, is, is there a consensus that that will work or will not work? So typically, um, you don't reduce taxes during an expansion phase of the business cycle. Um, typically, if you're going to uh, cut taxes, you want to do that to help expand the economy through a recession. So we're sort of going against economic theory here, what we're seeing in reality. I um, mean, as far as the tax cuts on households, it's good on the corporate side um, because that's pro-growth taxes for um, on the corporate side. As far as households responding to taxes, um, it, there's still a lot of uncertainty there because what am I going to do with that small increase in disposable income that I get? Am I going to save it? Am I going to invest it? Am I going to pay down debt? Or am I going to turn around and, and go spend it in the economy and increase GDP? But you do see a lot of uh, economists on the president's side that say that this will uh, spur you know, growth in, in the economy and will deal with the deficits. It, you know, how, 
How much of a consensus is there in the economic community? Oh, I, I wouldn't say it's a large consensus by, by any means. Um, uh, I, I certainly don't feel that way. Um, just based on the theory in, in traditional monetary policy, what you use during which phase of the business cycle, traditional fiscal policy, what you use, you know, people don't realize that federal spending is already up. Um, it's higher than it was last year this time. So, we, you know, that deficit is growing, and it's going to continue to grow. And, and uh, Frank, Paul Ryan said that the one thing that he was not able to accomplish uh, in, in, as Speaker of the House is entitlement uh, reform. And for those of you watching, that means dealing with your Social Security and your Medicare here, because that was another piece of the puzzle, that the Republicans knew that these tax cuts would add to the deficit, but that they would partially make up on it in terms of reforming Medicare and Social Security. Uh, <coughs> which remains a, <coughs> a third rail. Uh, we've yet to see somebody um, <coughs> uh, tackle entitlement reform. There's a lot of folks that don't think that we should mess with uh, entitlements. Uh, this will put more pressure uh, on them. But I, I have to come back because I just was chuckling when you, you used e economists, uh, or economic consensus and the word consensus in the same thing. Don't you know that if you put two economists in a room, you're going to get at least three opinions? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that seems like a, a, an inside joke, but I, I get that. The, now we are in the phase uh, that we're, we're coming up against the, the midterm elections here, and, and uh, Congress is not going to, not that they were doing a lot of legislating before, but they're certainly not going to be doing a lot of legislating uh, from now to the end of the year here. So what you have left there in the space is the president, uh, who has a lot of leverage to do what he wants in terms of tariffs and other economic moves here. Um, you know, is the political community concerned about that? <clears throat> He's going to have some discretion on the t on the, the tariffs front. Um, I'm waiting to see whether or not he's going to follow through. I think you've seen him on a lot of issues. He likes the way out. He just wants to declare victory with a better deal. I'm not sure how much leverage uh, that he has. Given right now what the political winds um, are uh, boating in terms of a, a blue wave, I don't think you're going to see a lot of cooperation on the part of Congress. And then if, in fact, um, the Republicans lose control of, of the House, you're going to see um, a lot of resistance to proceeding with the president's There agenda. is a large consensus among macroeconomists that generally discretionary fiscal policy should not be used. It is heavily frowned on. Well, then that leaves really few alternatives except for cutting the military, which we are actually spending more money on. Um, there's not a lot of other things to, to cut, but uh, Jeff, let me ask you this. What, in your opinion, what has a bigger impact on what the market is doing on a daily basis? Would it be tweets from a certain president of the United States and comments, or it's earnings report season? I think earnings has a big play on that, but obviously you wake up and there's a tweet, so the futures actually play into that, and it might be positive, might be negative. I always get a kick out of waking up and looking at what that is. And then the reality comes in. This week, a third of the S&P companies are reporting earnings, and so far they've been very strong. But we've seen early on, remember, the banks had strong earnings, and all the banks were down that same day. So people are really looking forward, and is this sustainable? You know, and I think we have to look at companies individually and the economy. Is it sustainable and for the long term? And I think the answer is yes for the most part. But the excitement of the banks is, seems to be already over. Amazon has had a great growth rate, but Even maybe... Even they took a little hits because of a couple of comments. I'm sure if you bought Amazon at 800, you'd still be pretty happy. Okay, we have to leave it there. Thank you all. Before we go, we want to share with you what some of you had to say about last night's show on the new red flag law. The Florida legislature recently implemented several new gun laws, including one allowing law enforcement to confiscate guns from people deemed a risk to themselves or others in order for someone to get their guns back. You would have to convince a judge. So we went to Facebook to hear your thoughts. And Shannon says, making cops and judges shrinks, no proof, just an allegation, and the gun grab begins. Gareth says, mentally ill persons don't need and should not have firearms, period. 
Well, if you'd like to join the conversation on tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mysuncoast.com.abc7, and you can watch past discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. We want to thank our guests for being here tonight. Kristen Zaborski is an economics professor at State College of Florida. Jeff Stern is an ABC7 business insider, and Frank Alcock, a political science professor at New College.